So here's Mr. Amit Kashyap. Kashyap. He also explains about the digital storytelling, uh, which is a short uh, form of digital ma digital media production that allows everyday people to share aspects of their story. To discuss more about on digital storytelling, I would like to call upon Mr. Amit Kashyap, the co-founder at Anti-Social Dragon, to define more about in digital storytelling concepts. He is a certified by IIM Bangalore from CMO Digital Marketer and certified by SAS for Data Science and Data Analysis. He is also certified in R Basics, that is Harvard University, uh, with 12 plus years of total experience in leading global digital strategies and implementation of complex enterprise level digital projects. He has catered digital strategies services to brands like Air India, SOTC, Yes Bank, INSI, Indus Inland Bank, Eurokids, Club Mahendra, Times Property and many more. So Amit is awarded the Best Digital Marketing Professional in 2014 by SMO Council of Asia. So with no further delay, we call upon Mr. Amit on the topic to discuss about digital storytelling. So, hi Mr. Ramit, uh, start up the session. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Amit Kashyap and uh, you know, I'm a co-founder of anti Social Dragon. Uh, I think already you know, the brief information about me is already given to you. So, I'm, I'm a data scientist and uh, you know, I do the lots of things in terms of the innovation, data analysis and uh, you know, uh, digital marketing things. You know. uh, this is the topic which, which is given to me is really interesting because you know, uh, if you look at the digital storytelling, you know, uh, storytelling, the things concept entire itself is booming right now. So everyone is, you know, uh, looking for the video. Everyone is looking for, you know, uh, creating a less content, you know, mobile, even YouTube, and everyone, every everyone is around, you know, uh, squeezing the content in such a format which can tell, uh, you know, lots of information in a less span of time. And apart from that, it should be impactful to the users. So if I say impactful, if you compare the normal content, normal images, they are less, you know, impactful. They require a hell of a job to explain the entire story. So to know the story, you have to read a, you know, entire paragraph, entire, uh, you know, books, and then you conclude something. But if you want to tell the story, you can tell the entire story of the three, four pages in just one or two minutes through the video. But the thing is that there is an art involved in it, you know. Uh, to and tell the entire story in a right format which connects with the audience and audience able to correlate you know uh, the story and uh, you know the most important part is and you know something like you know if uh, the video is going on or uh, if you built up the you know video and uh, that video is playing so i should connect with the video and i feel like you know this story or this information is correlated with me or i can pick up some information from this and it's making relevance to me so these all things are the part of the digital storytelling it's booming right now yeah everyone is looking for uh, if, if you look at the average length of the uh, uh, storing video digital storytelling video it's, it's more or less you can say uh, around to you know 3 to uh, 10 minutes is max that you can talk about it there are various component of the story uh, digital storytelling but what all things involved we'll just go through that that these are the you know we, it, we require a graphics we require audio we require a story we require a content, sometimes we require a characters also. These all things combined together to tell the story. Yeah, this is the, this is the best part of the storytelling. So we'll go further in details. Okay, uh, if we go to the, you know, uh, pillars of the digital storytelling, the one is the power, power of the text. So if I say power of the text, that means we require lots of information to aggregate. And the text, it should be in a minimal part, but it should have the impactful. I'm going to say the punchline, the content, and the correlation between the context and the content has to be there. So you can use hell of a content, do the research of the content and pick up the what component, what tagline, what information is relevant for your story and to the audience. So if you look at one, you are creating a video and other part, the audience are, or the viewers or listeners are there. So both need to be synced together, you know, if if I'm looking at the video and some punchline is there on the part, so I, if I'm able to correlate, so it, it making sense, I will engage. So three things parallel goes in the video format. One is the content which is coming in an animated part. 
another is the background uh, you know you can say pictures which you support for telling the story and the background music or your voice over so three components combined together to tell one story where the power of text is very important because it's catch the eyeball right eyeball is there so people emphasize and start reading you in the background some sounds are there some you know uh, uh, voice over are there but yeah we look at the pictures we look at the text and try to correlate the left brain and the right brain together so this that's why the powerful content need to be portrayed in the storytelling concept now if you look at the image the image sometimes you know just tagline just one word or one sentence is not enough to explain something you know uh, that's required a supporting image what you want to tell so if i'm saying uh, you know uh, example a punchline why we should get into the digital storytelling so now this tagline this information will will have less impact if it is not supported with the right story what are the aspect of the digital story i can if you can make it an infographic or i i can support some picture support some vectors that makes a, you know a relation sync together where people will correlate yeah by looking at the picture and the context they correlate that this is something like your what you're talking about so yeah the power of the image is very important we love images if the site it is or any website any digital things which is having lots of content we never accept it so, so yeah the image is very important if you like the uh, sound sound it could be the voice over it could be subtle music which you know actually when it going through the process you will find you know if you are looking at anything in the background the sound effect is very important to take the content very seriously yeah so if you look at the you know uh, sound background music if it is in subtle way you go in nice zone if if, if your music a uh, delicate example if it, it is a emotional story so it has to go with the guitar music and all everything so that you understand you sync with that you focus on the content if it is something like very aggressive and very prominent then it goes some louder music where your voice and voice wavelength and the sound wavelength has to mix and sync together you know to you know build up the impact the last one is the power of synergy where all three aspects has to talk the same thing convey same thing that is an important thing sometimes context is saying something else image is saying something else and the sound is weird or something talking something else so it need to be sync parallelly all the sync has to work in a synergy so that it is give the actual impact right this is the power now i already explain the you know component the power of text power of images and power of sound so yeah we'll go to the next slide so e example if if you want to build, uh, you know build up a digital storytelling concept and or something like you want to build up your own video uh, on that format so what all things are important how to begin how to start so first for most is the ideations let example i want to build up a uh, digital storytelling about some stats some information which i want to uh, uh, you know give it to management or to the audience some talking about you know how the growth rate or something like happening some statistical data is are there so the ideation stage is something like what all the component i need to take care of it you know what are the segments so let example if my video is around you know 5 minute so i will split it out into the three segment maybe one video is something like uh, you know video will start for 2 minutes covering x part then 3 minutes y part so it, it includes both the components so i will split it where first i will you know uh, put the all the information and then conclude it so this is something like you have to ideate in the ideation phase as i split it the entire video in two part the information collection process is important so you can split the entire video in two part and then first part is a where you collect the, all the information and create a bullet points create a some stats which is impactful some stats is the eye opener for the management and then you conclude the other part of the stats how you uh, change the stats how you change the strategy these all things are there now i defining for whom you are making I assume that uh, you are making a storytelling for your management assume so for them it is very important to and you know, see the you know a broader picture not the detailed version so the audience if you look so so yeah the, the another part we are talking about the you know listener and the viewers so the content that you are building up you have to define for whom you are making if you are making for the audience like serious audience management where you know historic you can say the broader picture the broader stats very crisp and to the points you can talk about it if you're talking about you know very happening very emotional then you can talk about some touch points which is creating a engagement where person can correlate you know i'm also in that frame or i was also in that frame so i can go in that zone and 
you know be serious on that so that is you know very important part for whom you are making this story now another part is the script writing what content you want to talk about it at what format what length yeah the so the story is is important so how the story will go what are the component you going to cover in the story development part so at what depth what level and how it going to impact to the audience that is important that you can plot in the story development part now the the uh, identifying the engaging hook so let example where i'm emphasizing so you, it, it is a core of the digital storytelling what context what uh, label i'm talking about so am i talking about the starts which is very painful in the negative side or the positive side to the management that is one thing or i'm talking about my story which is you know very uh, struggling or something like that so you have to pick up the one context which is the hook for the engagement if you built up the hook that content become very engaging to the audience and they will listen to the all the context right so yeah i'm getting lots of query what are the tools we going to use for digital storytelling so we'll talk about it in the last slide be patient about it yeah so identifying the supporting music so how it going to go about it so what is a pitch if you are very fast then uh, aggressive then a pitch a pitch should be on a higher side if you are talking about very emotional and subtle way it has to go in the very lower level and the minimal level you can use the images you can use the other uh, tools and then get into the development so if i broadly say first is the ideation stage then collect the information about the story then think about the audience whom you are creating the entire story then create a script what are the component how the story will go around the story development and script then you identify what are the hook where you will emphasize more penetrate more so that it it impact the audience then actually identifying the supporting music for related things so and then the images and videos whatever you want or clips something like that and then you get into the development so this is how you can start your storytelling okay so these are the pillars of you know basically uh, this is storytelling now one thing is that something like if you're talking about anything or story, or video is around some content that context need to be connected you know if if i'm if i'm audience i'm not able to connect with your context so there is no point making video for me so first for most you have to identify the target audience for whom you are making the uh, uh, storytelling this is storytelling things make the context very relevant to them so that they connect if this is a very very important point if you look at the tons of videos are there on the internet but we hardly look at the video and some video are very popular and some video are high, you know less in the view the thing is that they missed out the contextual point so for whom you are talking about that connectivity need to be taken care in the preliminary stage so the context is very important if you go to the emotional part emotional is something like where i believe that this information is relevant for me it going to help me out or or i'm i'm a part of that content somehow i feel like i'm a part of the content it's happening with me or it happened to me something like that so there the emotional connect is there so by looking at the audience you have to say some word say some you know jargon or some information which catch them hook them something like this is something like you know i should look at so one is the context i have to set another is the emotional hook that i need to create in the entire format now the persuasion part is there where you want the audience where you driving the audience to some level or some direction or some conclusion so i have created a you know context i have created the emotional part now i become the driver for the audience now where i want to uh, uh, drive them at what context what conclusion that is important that you have to uh, define in the persuasion flow next is a engagement and advocacy now you have to come out where you have give you have to give the window to people if they are engaged they are convinced with the storytelling things whatever you are talking about in the video they should feel like participating they should feel like sharing the video and relevant to the audience you know if if i see that video is very relevant i will share to some people who's who's you know uh, similar to me or you know uh, they are in the same line of business something like that so that is that is a hook that you need to create now feel good factor is also after watching the video i should feel like aggressive i should feel like yeah it's satisfying i should feel like it's solving my problem yes this is something like you know it should be concluded in the video format in the storytelling now talking about the owning the concept i should feel like this is something like really wow man if if you talk about lots of things and which is you know related to me so it, it's it's tons of things are you know i can I, i can correlate i can visualize but by looking at a small snippet of the video and again the thought process starts so i own the concept 
so i'm driving it so this is the format that you should look at now coming to the why digital story is so important nowadays and becoming i, I will I, i bet on you that it is going to be increasing you know day by day and lots of people will involved i can visualize a day where the content will become a king is it a king only but the not the contextual one the video format the information the amount of information that video can flow and can educate by reading at the lots of content reading of the books you can't get it because it's 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 ignite your you know visualization power which you can't do in the textual format right this is there now that's why the video is booming and you know uh, everyone is doing the video format if you look at why we should get into the digital storytelling so yeah i'm a individual but i have a virtual profile on the mobile in respect to the facebook instagram and other social media profile profile i'm having a virtualization of myself which is not similar to me as i am right now it is way beyond but my consumption rate my the content consumption is very massive on the this platform in compared to what i'm looking at so if i look at the day i spent i dis, i spend more on the video which is on a small screen rather than looking at the actual pictures actual video through my eyes i mean say the real world so i spend less time to watching as a real world as a nature or whatever is happening i look at the same content through the video format video format on the mobile so mobile penetration is increasing mobile uh, accessibility is increasing day by day in all developed country and developing country that's why the video become the hook now coming to the next content so we read through eyes and ears now we stop we we are not talking too much we are not reading the books we are not reading the context on the screen we look at the entire video and conclude it the only thing the eyes and the ears are used so we become lazy or you can you can say we we are saving energy and you know relying on the other efforts and concluding yes or no so i don't want to read the entire story i want to read view the video and conclude it it's good for me or not that is a one thing that people are doing right now that's why the the digital storytelling is booming now it's 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 effortless learning you have to chill relax look at the video and you know just watch it don't do anything don't make sound don't concentrate just 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 go with the flow even can, the answer will come to you so that's why the it's become effortless learning now talking about the viral things if you look at the content which go viral 99% are the videos only right the videos that we are consuming consuming it's going viral and we we are you know sharing lots of content that's why if you look at the four pillars it's become very important for the digital marketers digital people to and get into the digital storytelling and create the content accordingly so that it go viral you have to spend less if you let example if you are running a facebook ad you have to put the picture now the picture is having some context which is facebook is giving the limitation saying that you can't use beyond you know 20% or 30% of the content in the image and you can we will not approve your ad that's a constraint i want to tell lots of story to my audience uh, this two line is not enough for me to convince my audience it does making sense so what i need facebook is giving a window to an advertise on the videos or you can do the video promotion a booster post now the video has a you know variety you know you can create a story you can you know uh, target the right context right information of context and influence people talk lots of things and same money also and probably your image can go cannot go viral but your video can go viral quickly if the image if the video has has the power right so that's why the storytelling is very important now what are the tools which is used for the digital storytelling rightly said you can use powerpoint and convert it into video with a voice over effect also so you can create a good animation ppt with pictures and tag lines and then create a background music with your voice over and then convert it into the video format that's the easiest way you can use your media window media player also or uh, other tools but some of the tools which are used high, heavily is is something like uh, digital storytelling and uh, you know the premiere pro is there then adobe spark is there and other tools are there which is is there in the screen so you can look at this screen look at the video, uh, uh, these are tools and you know Uh, start making some of them are premium some of them are free also but as we know we can do it on you know a uh, powerpoint presentation also if you look at the infographic the infographic is also the part of the digital storytelling but not in a video format is in a pictorial format now the if you convert the entire uh, infographic into video format it's become very appealing crisp clear and easy to understand 
this is something like you can get into that. All right. So uh, this is something like you know I already spoke about the storytelling. You know, uh, lots of information. I'm open for the question. You can ask me anything. Uh, I can answer it. Um, yeah, Mr. Amit, uh, that was definitely an uh, informative uh, speech on the digital storytelling. Uh, so, um, um, guys, uh, the online participants, uh, who are as, uh, have any other queries on uh, digital storytelling, you can post your questions in chat box and then uh, if you are interested to come online to ask for the questions, you can raise your hand button and then you ask the queries and then uh, get clarified with Mr. Amit Kashyap. Could you list some free storytelling tools? These are the, these are the tools which you can uh, use for digital storytelling. I, I, as I say, PPT is a PowerPoint presentation is also the part of the digital storytelling things. Apart from that, you can use uh, uh, your Premiere Pro, Adobe Spark, iMovie, and Camtasia is there. Okay. Uh, so, Miss um, Monisha, have you have been uh, clear your doubts? I, I think so. So here comes the second question also. How much relevant story can we give for different peoples on globe? Each one needs, uh, want, and desire is not the same. So uh, the answer is basically, you know, uh, there is no limit for the story. You can build up. The first, first for most, you have to select the audience for whom you are making the story. So if you're making a story for the management, for the teenagers, for your woman group, or maybe uh, some friends, or for the family, these all things are can be taken care of. But you have to understand the target audience and you can create a multiple story. Now the thing is that it could be the chain of stories that you can build up if you really want to hammer them, penetrate them, you know, uh, to the depth and get some output, get some conversion. So there is no limit for it. Okay. So, uh, okay. So here comes the second question. Next question. So real images required or edited one. Which one is more effective for uh, storytelling in digital marketing? All right. I will say first for most. I will give the weightage to the vectors because vector is something like uh, which not you know uh, tell the another story. Uh, there is two component. One is a text, and another is a picture with uh, other components. Uh, Assume that I have a picture of a street where the car is also there, trees are also there and you know some signals and also there. So I'm talking about you should drive you know uh, safe in the car, uh, safe on the road. But there are, uh, there are some other component which is not correlated with the context like trees and pillars and all blah blah stuff. So try to avoid that things you know other factors, other component in the images. Make a straight road and then precisely talk about I'm talking about the road, I'm talking about driving be safe. So it has to be very crisp and clear. So the communication has to go very impactful to the audience. So okay. I will say so here's the next question Mr. Component. Amit. How long should a video uh, video be to have a maximum impact? All right. So the, if you look at the impact, virality of the impact of the video, it lies between 24 to 48 hours. That is there, the virality. Now if you look at the normal video which you created on the storytelling, it can have the lifetime values, but the context need to be now. It's totally up to you. You define the deadline or you know dead time of the video. Now, if if you look at the stats, which is very dynamic in the nature. Right now, I'm talking about um, last month growth report. Now, next month, the same video will not in the context, right? So you have to define till how long you want to keep this video in the format. So. Uh, Yes, it's okay. the time is so the next question comes here. So, story. how analytics helps in storytelling? All right. So, analytics is something like you know, uh, it will help you to understand uh, to plan your next uh, you know video. You can say so. Looking at the engagement percentage, looking at the uh, time they have viewed the content. Maybe your content is for ten minutes, and they viewed for five minutes. That means it will tell you the analytics analytical way. Something you have done wrong in the, uh, you, you can say fifth, five minute or six minute, which is not engaging, where the hook drop, where the engagement is not there, where correlation doesn't work. That's why they give up. So, looking at the analytics, you can revise your video format. You can revise your next story. Yeah, if I say video analytics plays key role, identifying the audience interest and the engagement and the communication, which is. Uh, Went to the audience. Okay. 
Here's the next question, which is uh, your storytelling's the biggest challenges? What challenges you uh, overcome? She asked for. Uh, the thing is that ideation stage. This is a very important thing. Uh, lots of people get into the actual creation of the video, looking at the component. You start with the information gathering, but you should ideate first. You know, the ideation is something like very important. I don't know why I'm creating a digital story video. Uh, for whom I'm creating. And what is it going to impact? What is the output? What I you know need uh, from my audience? W what I want from the audience? What should they do after watching that video? So these are all things that we never ask. You know, we jump into the content. We thought like you know, let's let's create the uh, entire PPT in the video format and do some storytelling sort of thing. This doesn't work. You know, if you're starting the information from uh, starting the entire concept from the architecture point of view, information gathering. You can go for the next question. That's so, Ms. Uh, Susmit asked, uh, how to use storytelling for personal branding? Superman. I, I, I really appreciate uh, Susmit. The thing is that, you know, uh, this is the best part that you can do and it's easy to do, uh, technically. Uh, put, you know, telling this, uh, making a little story for uh, uh, stats, for other information could be the challenge. But if you look at the personalization, you can tell your story how you, you know, uh, get into that. If, if, if you look at the entire ecosystem, uh, brands and uh, emotional ads, they are telling the digital story in a such a format where emotional connects are there. So you can start your story with how you grow up, what are the challenges you faced, how you come out with the challenges, what are the things triggered you. And after telling, you know, entire things, what you are right now and, and, and what you want to become. So how, what information, what support you want from the audience that you can talk about it and they will be emotional with the content, they will be emotional with the video and they will hook up with you and then go in the zone. That does give you the right branding. So, but the impact has to be there. It should be very generic. You know, this is something like this guy has done a really fantastic job in the life, not in terms of success, in terms of the overcoming the, uh, you know, uh, Failure. This, this is something like you can portray. Okay. So the next question comes That's here like you can do the brand. Uh, AI, yeah. AR, VR, uh, the technology is being evolving right now. So which one you suggest for us today? So I will say AI is a thing. AR, VR is a part. It was there, but you know, people are, the technology is good, but it's not market ready. Or you can say we can't use this format for marketing. There are tons of challenges in AR, VR. But the AI where only the data driven decisions are there. So if you implement the AI part in the website, it's become your dynamic website sort of, you know, for each customer, it's behave differently. For each customer, you do the persuasion differently. So it, it's work in different format altogether. So you collect lots of data from the browser. You have a Google Analytics, tons of data are collected. If you look at the Google Analytics, it's almost have the 506 attributes. And these attributes can be utilized in the learning of the, your audience and then you can assure the conversion from the website. Okay, so the here AI comes part. the uh, next the question. Uh, yeah. Mr. Daryl asks, uh, how are major brands approaching international social media strategy? All right, so if you look at the international brands approaching for the, uh, I mean, say the brand which is approaching for the, it, it could be the domestic, it could be the international, but how they go about it, there is a huge gap, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, the two audience, Assume that being in an India uh, doing some promotion in the UK or maybe U US, the TG and the behaviors and the platform selection are different. If you look at the Facebook in India, it's more like, you know, you can get into the 25 to 30, pe 30 age people, bra age bracket are very prominent in the Facebook. If you look at the abroad, the Facebook starts on the lower side. So it's not preferred platform. Now they use the, you know, TG. Then you use the, you know, country wise, uh, you can look at the uh, platforms and the content. So if I look at the TG, my TG is between 18 to 25 female. And I look at the behavior pattern. I will look at the preferences in India may differ to, uh, to US and UK. Now I need to create all three contents and their platform selection could be different. So it's, it's basically, you know, creating a separate uh, strategy for same audience in different different geolocation with different platforms. This is how okay. the so are here comes right. with the uh, next question uh, with, with Michael. Uh, what are the best solutions uh, or personal uh, online reputation management? 
all right if you look at the online reputation management there is a tons of tools the for, for, for uh, the first for, for, for most you have to understand uh, you know uh, what are tools you should use for listening the uh, your audience now if you, there is two part one is i i you know i'm listening and reacting on the content assume that my personal branding is a personal online i'm a celebrity or i'm a politician sort of things i need my clean profile on the internet so first for most the one aspect one fold of the online reputation management is something like i should listen the uh, you know positive negative polarization or content which is going on the internet irrespective of youtube twitter has or or some trending or news channel or google news portal blogs or some facebook social media sort of things i should listen all the content and react in a such a way so that it's neutralize my impact or i can have the mileage of the uh, content let example there is two content one is talking about the negative another is talking about proactive now pro positive content can be maximized to influence other people but pro negative things can be suppressed by the content which is supportive in nature the thing is that if you looking at the personal online reputation management you should look at the uh, influence marketers and the content pool and the platforms where in the platforms play a role to listen the content bring the influencer in the picture with the content and neutralize the positive things negative things and maximize the positive okay things. so here comes the next questions the also uh, how do you fix your damaged yeah. reputation all right so damaged reputation is something like this two way either you get into the argumental stage or you can certain way you can neutralize a third way you can create a army who work for you so if i say create a army that means there are some contributor there are some uh, you know brand people who are having a, a customer who has aggressive sentiment for a brand they are saying talking about this brand is really nice they are the mentors they are the people who you can find on the internet this group of people who are very obsessed who are very you know influenced with the brand and their service other sets are there who are you know doing the bad thing on the internet where you have to do the damage control you can bring those people and neutralize it or this is one way where a war can happen or other other thing is something something like you can go in subtle way act like a you know uh, take the ownership of the damage and you know uh, solve the issues in a granular manner subtle manner and you know get it done where the financial matters are now there if you can go transparent this information is something this process of solving and you know talking to the customer and neutralizing their negative sentiment it's is good for the brand it's talk about it when you are in a crisis you always look at the customer not yourself as a brand so it is, is it can work as a miracle for your brand so never you know look at you know uh, uh, hiding or you know uh, ignoring the content ignoring the damage things go go in the front being as a brand r respect the concerns answer the query solve it in settle manner you can take it offline you can take it personally okay so it. next question Get is like he's a uh, mr jeff asking for some suggestions some people are afraid of having a bad reputation or getting reviews so to stay offline is this a good idea no i will not say this is a good idea example if if i have a negative sentiment i already talk about it if i have a negative sentiment or negative review about some product which i purchase from a xyz company and it's not coming to that way so i have aggression for the brand i don't have aggression for uh, you know aggression is because of the product and and it can if you hide it if you ignore it i'm not available so uh, it is become aggression for the brand which is wrong thing now next time you, cre uh, you release a product it will you know have a you have it has to face some you know a blockage or some you know hurdles in the launching part this is one part another part being offline doesn't mean you know people will not talk about on internet they will definitely talk about on the internet they will talk about in the close community they will talk about uh, negative on the different different forum in their close network and close group so actually they are influencing other people to build up the negative perception for your brand which is wrong thing if they have aggression let them come to the brand let them react you become you have to uh, ready with the counter part or you have to ready with the support system you have to ready with the you know listening so i think being being as a brand you have to become a good listener listen the positive and negative part yeah it doesn't mean that you have created a product is you know brilliant in the nature it can come up with anything after you know I, i'm using a, any laptop i'm using from last 10 years now it is creating a problem it doesn't mean you know i have extreme negative sentiment i will have settle of negative sentiment which can be subjective which can be neutralized by the other audience boss 
the laptop life cycle is for 2 years if the laptop is going for 10 years that means you have uh, you know uh, the laptop has done brilliant job why you thinking about a uh, uh, 11th year so it's good so my negative sentiment will neutralize on the internet so you should be there listen to them hiding okay. from the internet so the next question is like story telling for paid marketing like google ads how much we can spend minimum uh, how to avoid uh, story skipping and uh, improve more visibility also all right uh, if you're looking at the ad uh, on youtube uh, for storytelling now i i to, uh, i talk about the you know, contextual the in my slide if you go to the uh, just the uh, pillars so yeah contextual connect so con contextual connect and emotional connects are two things which can incepted in you know first you know uh, you can say 3 4 second then you can do the persuasion if you start persuading you know the customer or in advocacy or feel good factor or owning concept in the primary 3 4 second or it never going to work so i should correlate with the context the video which you are talking about now you can do the keyword targeting the keyword you are talking about that can be or set of keywords that you are using in the adword or youtube channel promotions that has some you know con context that context you can talk about it where a audience looking at the video can correlate and then they will start looking at they will not skip the ad and the impact is there so yeah look at the entire thing as a holistic figure you you can incept the contextual connect and the emotional connect okay. first three parts so here she asked for the next question also yes. so chatbot chatbot for e-commerce story telling Uh, next one is a storytelling in marketing automation. How much personal touch can be given with to today's uh, technology available? Now, if we look at the chatbot, they are not evolved. They are still in the learning phase. Now, we have a lots of things. I, I, I think, uh, uh, Monisha, you you seems to be Indian. So, if you look at the Indian mentality, Indian people. I mean to say, or or any languages you talk about it. the variety of things are there you know the languages are different the way we use the words the way you know uh, we you uh, know jargons we use in different different geo locations are very different you know so it's not standardized the language is not standardized so how chat bot bot can uh, uh, do the miracles now when we talk we use the emotional impact we use the authority impact through the words now same words can have authority value can have the negative impact can have the positive impact can have sarcastic manners also so this all permutation combination a chatbot can't do they are still evolving they are still learning it will take at least 3 to 4 years to work the miracles now if you look at the flow based chat it is something like you know a, a flow where if you do this then this will happen if you do that then that will happen that that's a easy hook that you can in, get into that for the e-commerce things if you look at still the the ai driven driven chatbot is the key that we as a digital marketing okay, should look so at okay so here is the last question chatbot. it seems like uh, peter um, mr peter asks is it possible to tell stories listing images for uh, content packs like uh, facebook posts yeah you can do that definitely i given the example of the facebook where you can talk about it. the corazel ads are there their videos are there and you know uh, if you look at the facebook format itself you know facebook always come you will see the timeline hey amit last year you have done something with that and this what has a dislike and all everything you become star and all so facebook itself is using the storytelling format for you and promoting it and which you feel like sharing so uh, facebook is collecting the information from your own behavior own stats and creating into the video format with using your own pictures and your related pictures your friends pictures and then tell you the story where you 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 feel you you get the feel good factor and start sharing it so you can do that same thing same concept on the facebook big yes okay. to that you should start. so uh, that's good uh, so uh, online participants who are any other uh, queries uh, regarding this same digital ma digital storytelling you can uh, post your questions in chat box and then uh, if uh, if your uh, uh, your questions will be uh, clarified and then mr amit you can share your uh, official mail id so that in case of any other participants right. they need their queries to be clarified in person right, they will right. be uh, like uh, i mean posting your questions to your mail id itself right i'm i'm available on linkedin so uh, you can get me on the linkedin in dot uh, amit uh, dash kashyap and dash india that you can search me and apart from that you can write me on amit at the rate anti social dragon dot com so i love to answer your query and uh, it's a good platform 
so uh, uh, thanks to everyone to listening to me and you know, lots of queries and okay thank you Amit. the organizers and that's all. not an issue that's so not this one is an uh, that is so interactive session uh, right now we have uh, many participants over here asking for you uh, regarding the uh, doubts in digital storytelling also i think so hope they have enjoyed the session also that is so informative also mr amit thanks for the session mm -hmm.